welcome to the best of the rest, a little thing that we're doing here on the channel to highlight what the hell is going on in lower league football. Patrice Everett said it. I love this game! <laughs> and if the mainstream media can't be asked to shout about it on the regs, then your boy, your boy on this channel, non-league content creator of the year. I'm holding nothing here because nothing actually ever arrived. I won that back in November, to be fair. I don't think it's coming. The best non-league content creator is here to bring you s stuff. Listen, I want to make non-league football normal and not a novelty. There's plenty of seats at the table here. Like, you know when a random step free side does well in the FA Cup every so often and meets one of the 92 and suddenly the commentary is all based around what jobs the players do. Oh, he's done well there, the electrician. Anyways, in the intro, you saw Ramsgate FC come from 3-1 down to equalise in the 98th minute with a scorpion kick from Kane Rowland. Great reflexes from the plasterer there as Ramsgate remained top of the league. Five games to go, probably looking at either them or Chatham Town. Whitehawk with a chance to gain promotion as well there. But let's park Whitehawk's promotional chances for a second and focus on their food menu. It all kicked off on footy scran over the weekend, didn't it? Now, I've actually been to Whitehawk. I wasn't actually impressed with the food too much, to be honest with you, but things change. I do remember a very traditional looking clubhouse and then out of nowhere, pow, a London chicken shop has just popped up. But anyway, featured on footy scran, it's the highlight for any single non-league club, let's be honest. A 10 sausage meal for seven quid. That's 10 sausages, chips and a drink for seven pounds. Seven pound. That's value. It's absolute value. My only concern from this photo is the two containers. I've got me sausages. I've got me chips. I want to eat them, but I can't. Oh, and my drink. What about my drink? Have I left that on the bar? Unless it's a can and I've stuffed it in my pocket. I've got it stuffed under my armpit while I'm walking around trying to find a way of eating this. I, I don't know what's happening. Bigger containers needed. Rob on Twitter totally gets it. Two container meals at a football match. Seems like too much trouble than it's worth. Donald did chirp in though. One of the containers closes. Just put the open one on the closed one while you walk to your seat. Or stand around. Either way, you're good. I still want one big container, please. I actually think the best way to solve this is not actually go for the meal. Just the 10 sausages, please. I'm on a diet. Even better value, £4.50. Other appearances on Footy Scram this week included Jack Daniels Paul Pork Loaded Fries from Notts County, £7.50. Yeah, I'd be all over that. Definitely need a few napkins, though. Oh, and then we had Slough Town's Goat Curry. Big fan of Goat Curry or Curry Goat. Are you a Goat Curry person or a Curry Goat? I swing both ways, but I do not want the plantain. That's, yeah, no. Scrolling through, I'm just seeing if we can find anyone that doesn't like change... Yep, we found him. We've got, we got Recklesham Baggy. Who wants that at a football ground, he says. Absolute winner. He doesn't want change. Pie and pints only for him. In other news, hashtag United's 21 game win streak came to an end at the weekend. As they were adding W's to their Twitter updates, I genuinely thought they were going to go the rest of the season and do it. I don't know what that would have ended up at. But it was Stone Market Town that did the business. And I have to say, I do live quite close by and there was a lot of sad faces on the streets of Hashtag that night. But let's look deeper into this, right? That run beats Barcelona and Liverpool achieved 18 back-to-back -back wins and has equaled Man City with 21 and all. I couldn't actually dig up much around non-league football records, but I did see back in 2017 that South Shields went on a 31-game win streak, only to be told by Guinness World Records, this is a fantastic achievement by South Shields Football Club. Unfortunately, due to varying standards of football played all around the world, we only monitor record-breaking from top division football. You hear that? If you're a non-league club or a fan of a non-league club, you don't matter. You're wasting your time. We all are. Everyone. Now, I'm just going to say, all right, if Wrexham, for example, went on a 31-game win streak, everyone would be talking about it, wouldn't they? Guinness Book of World Records will be all over it because Ryan Reynolds and the other guy somehow make this non-league club a top division football club. Paste that in the record books. Of course they would. But poor old South Shields and everyone on the streets of Hashtag, they have to suffer. For the record, I do love what's happening down at Wrexham, by the way. And so does Ben Foster. Absolutely loving it. Come out of retirement, straight into the sticks for his second debut and keeps a clean sheet and all. The big question is, will we see the goal cam back? Keep your eyes peeled is something I hate hearing because... Ugh, I peel a lot of potatoes when it comes to dinner and, and stuff like that. And the thought of peeling your eye... Ew, no. No. I've also just been made aware that the goal cam is back. So there you go. No need to peel any eyes. Here's Foley up on the two players to hit Woodwork. Filthy. Dominic Pollion with his 32nd league goal of the season for Ebbsfleet, who, by the way, are currently top of the National League South. And the first comment I saw on this, they're televising sixth tier now. What next? My Sunday league? Well, it's quite obvious that Jamie never watched Palmer's FC. I know that much. But Jamie, as an Oldham fan, just looking here, surely you should be glad that they're televising the sixth tier. The biggest fall from grace. Premier League once. By their track record, they could easily be sixth tier. I mean, they're literally nine points off now in the National League. Here's Jamie when Oldham are in the National League North and he can't find coverage. Stick with the National League for a second. I bet you're asking Smith. What happens if Gateshead survive this year? Well, for starters, the rest of the league need to get their Gateshead budget together. The travel there, nightmare. But as it stands, we've got a 2-2 situation, a Desmond. If things stay the same, Gateshead and Scunthorpe will go down to the National League North, whilst Torquay and Maidstone will go down to the National League South. It's, it's beautiful, it works well. But if Gateshead survive and one of the two clubs above, such as Dorking Wanderers or Yeovil drop in, that's another Southern club. 
then we've got a free one situation a desmond free one obviously both national league north and south need to stay even in numbers and with three going down to the south someone in that league needs to be pushed over to the north or up to the north more like i've got this tweet here which highlights the map and braintree town are in fact the most northern team in that division braintree town currently occupying a playoff space so they could easily go up anyway but if they don't they could potentially be playing national league north next season instead of south that they're playing now other candidates that could switch to the national league north could be oxford city hemel hempstead you've got st albans but take no bishop stallford who are currently second in their league the league below if they came into this league they may just switch straight over to the north because they've played in that before we're coming to the end of the season but it's still very much in the air when you've got four divisions filtering down to two laceton town another one fact by the way my very first on the road was laceton town but I, I recorded it and i didn't like it and um yeah i cried but they're another team that could get pushed into the national league north even though they're very much in the south with jay on twitter here clearly pointing out that they're closer to brussels in belgium than they are chester who they could well be playing next season geography could we just talk about step three for a second because people bang on about the best leagues in the world obviously premier league comes up all the time championship for the ones that are a bit more we but right about now i'm telling you people you need to check out the ismian premier division look Look, Horn Church lead the way at the moment with a game in hand, by the way, 73 points. Bishop Stalford just behind, also on 73 points. Canvey and Averley on 71 each. And then you've got Enfield just outside on 66, but they do have the game in hand. The game in hand is against Horn Church. I think I'm going to have to go. Do you want me to go? I've got to go. What we want from a neutral point of view is Enfield to win that. That'll stick them on 69 points. And then you've got a top five with five games remaining. Anyone could win the league. Alternatively, if they don't win that, Horn Church win. Enfield find themselves in a bit of trouble. Cray Wanderers could creep in. Lose. It's not lose, it's Lewis. And I, I, I wholeheartedly disagree, by the way. It should be lose. I've been pulled up a few times on pronunciation of things. Lewis will be watching that game tonight between Hornchurch and Enfield Town. They could easily drag themselves into a playoff spot too. In fact, we're going down the league. Hastings game in hand. They could drag themselves in. What a league, and we will be keeping tabs on this league because I think there's some twists and turns. The game between Hornchurch and Enfield Town last time round ended 3-2, so expect goodness. And I'm going to try and get there, provided I can get the kids sorted. They need feeding. The misses at work, and there'll be like a crossover. I've got to get around the M25 a little bit, and then down the A10. Is it down the A10? I'm not sure. Anyway, geography. Finally, I'm here to let you know the most informed player in the world right now. That's right. Introducing Eddie Simon. Never trust a man with two first names. Yeah, Eddie Simon of Walton and Hersham, who actually eats hat tricks for breakfast. He just scored his fourth hat trick in a row, which is a record, I'm told. A record in non-league. Make your mind up. Why have my ears gone as pink as this Farnham Town top?